thing that the prompt is asking. Once you've gotten your script down, you've been practicing, add your personality. We wanna see you have fun with it. You don't have to look like somebody who's reading from a teleprompter. Have fun. Also, feel free to share your personal experiences if it aligns with what the question is asking, because again, you only have those two minutes. Be sure that you dress appropriately and that you have adequate lighting. We don't want you talking about your video response prompt, but then you're doing what you all do where you FaceTime and then the phone is pointed at the ceiling in your bedroom. So make sure that we're looking at you when you're recording your video responses. Also be cognizant of the background noises. So for instance, if you're in your car, make sure that there are no distracting noises. If you're sitting in a place that's very comfortable to you, make sure that your dress is not too comfortable to you. So if you're recording on the couch, for instance, we don't wanna see your bonnet or your do-rag or the mighty patch on your face. We wanna make sure that you're presenting yourself because these videos could also be something that is passed along to the partners. Record rough drafts of yourself and then have those sent out to family and friends to review, get their feedback. And then finally, before you upload your video response, check your links. One of the best ways that I would encourage for you to check your links, don't you do it, send it to somebody else and see if they're able to open up your link. Because if they can't do it, we're not gonna be able to do it. And unfortunately, as we're going through a process where we're dealing with thousands and thousands of student applications, we unfortunately don't have the time to reach back out to ask you to make your link available to us. So unfortunately, when we're talking about putting our best brand forward, that's an immediate disqualifier. So once you sent your um, submit your video and your application, know that there are no go backs. So you wanna make sure that you're going through every single thing, your application answers and responses, um, your video responses, how you're replying, how you're responding, how you're presenting yourself. Make sure you're reviewing all of that before you do the final submission of your video uh, re response. And so here are just a few things that you're gonna to wanna to steer clear of. You don't want to come across as if you're unprepared and that you don't know how to respond to the prompt. So for instance, going back to last year's general response question, how would your education benefit you, your family, or your community? What you want to avoid is thinking that, oh, that question is pretty simple. I can answer that off the cuff. I can record it day of, or I can actually do that in one sitting. So here's the thing, and here's how this may go. So you say to yourself, that question is fairly simple. You may start your video like this if you don't create your script. Hmm, how would my education benefit me, my family, and my community? Now that's a really good question. Where do I start with this? Because my education means a whole lot to me. Now you see when you're doing that fluff, you've already lost about 30 seconds. The video response time is only two minutes. And so that two minutes can go really quickly. Now, once you have prepared and created your script, the next checkpoint we put, because we saw it, do not submit any old or unrelated video responses. We'll be able to catch it. So your last year's video submission will not cut it this year. And let's say, say we did use last year's question. What we in theory should see is that there's growth that comes with that question. Um, so we should have seen growth versus shortcuts, but just to let you know on a little secret, the video was not the same. The video response is not the same this year. Next, do not hire a videographer. We understand that we live in the day of content creation. Everyone loves a good B-roll, behind the scenes, all that good jazz. You do not need to hire a videographer to complete your video responses. Next. This should be something that you're having fun with and that you're able to show your personality through. With the video response questions, please don't focus on the negative. We know that life has its fair share of trials 
And if the question alludes to sharing that, try to make it a positive impact versus dwelling on the negative impact. Even though our trials can knock us down, there's this one quote that comes to mind by Steve Harvey, and whether you like him or hate him, I really do think that this quote was pretty prolific. And so it says, you've survived 100% of your worst days. So when you think about that in context, even if a question asks you to spin a negative impact on your life, the fact that you survived that because you're still here, that's a great way to put a spin on a negative op obstacle that has happened in your life. And so I'm dealing with um, adding mind shift, shift, mind shift in my uh, 2024 goals. So I think I'm looking at that right now, getting started. Um, but moving on, don't get consumed with trying to showcase all of your merits and your awards. You only have two minutes to answer the prompt. So focus on the question at hand and be sure that you're answering it because you will be reviewed and scored on how you answer the prompt. So if you're focused on the fact that I'm a 3.0 a uh, GPA student with a 32 ACT. I've done 400 hours of community service. While that is commendable, if it doesn't correlate with the application video, please be sure that you're steering clear of that as it will result in low scoring. Now, on to some tips for how to share your videos. So here are some platforms that we strongly represent or recommend as you upload your videos. We definitely recommend using Google Drive to upload and share your video link. However, one caveat to this is that you'll want to make sure that the access is changed to anyone with the link. Now, this does not mean that your link is public. It only means that those individuals who have your link will have access to your video. If your video is left on private, there's no way that we'll be able to access your videos, which will then result in a zero score. YouTube is another platform that we recommend for you to use. Make sure that with your YouTube video that it is marked as unlisted. This also ensures that it is not public, but only available to those who have the link. The runner-up platforms that we would recommend to use would be Dropbox or Vimeo. But again, please make sure that these links are working and that anyone with access to the link can, look, can view it. What we would strongly encourage against is using iCloud, only because with the timing of our scholarship decisions, which is about a minimum of 12 weeks, oftentimes what we have found is that the iCloud is set to an expiration date. And sometimes by the time we're getting to the review and scoring piece, the expiration date has come and gone. And so we do not want this to happen to you. And so if you do use iCloud, I would encourage you to identify a way, um, if there's a way to extend it. If not, please steer clear of iCloud. But just to reiterate, the platforms that we do recommend would be Google Drive and YouTube top tier, followed by Dropbox and Vimeo. Next, what you'll see on the application is that you'll be asked to submit a professional headshot. Now, you don't necessarily need to hire a photographer either. To get your professional headshots, we don't want to see you at a concert with your friends or at a family reunion, even though we love a good night out and family time. Have fun with your headshot, but make sure that it is just you. And so one headshot in particular that may come readily available to everyone are your school photos. However, if it has the proof watermark going across the photo, please do not share that photo. We will be reviewing your professional headshots. And if we do deem that it is not presentable to send to the partner, we will reach out and ask for an updated headshot. And this again is why it is definitely important that your email is correct and belongs to you and is not a high school email address where communication is shut off once you graduate. Okay, now let's move on to some common mistakes. Here are some things that we want you to avoid when you're doing your profile and account creation. Please do not create multiple accounts with different email addresses. This does not increase your chances of being awarded and it will inevitably prolong your process. If you forget your password, 
All you have to do is a password reset. Again, please do not create multiple accounts. Please do not have someone else who isn't you creating your profile or your account or your application for that matter. Sometimes when they do this, they tend to forget that they're creating the account on your behalf and they begin entering the information for them and they're not the ones seeking the scholarship funding. Please refrain from adding a phone number that you do not use. Yes, we know we're in the day and age of texting and DMing and things of that nature, but this is about funding that can be applied to your schooling. So you'll wanna be sure that there are no incorrect numbers or non-working numbers. And again, please do not add your parents' contact information. Be sure that you are creating a password that you can remember. One of the biggest mistakes is that students create these long passwords and we get it for security reasons, but be sure that you remember those. As part of the application, be sure that you are not omitting any questions that you're answering and that you're answering every single question. Make sure that for your first time, for the first time college students and high school seniors, that you're using either a personal email or the college email I spoke of instead of your high school email. Now, if you are a college student, make sure that you are using an email that you check. So if your college issued email is the email that you check, be sure to put that down. However, if you check your personal email more frequently, be sure to put that in your application. Next, we want to make sure that you're not putting down your parents' information. Everything that you put on your application is should be your should be personal to you. Also, understanding the difference in between current classification versus classification for 2024-2025. Your current classification is what you're classified as of today. For example, if you are an undergraduate college freshman, so you're currently in college, then your current classification is freshman. If you are an undergraduate college freshman and you're answering the academic year 2024-2025, then your next year's classification may be sophomore. Next, do not use any links to bypass the video response or the professional photo. We will catch this and this could impact your application overall. Also be mindful of the college or university that you'll be attending for the academic year 2024-2025. For example, current college students, if you will not be attending the current college that you are enrolled in, then you'll want to include the college that you'll be attending for 2024-2025. For high school seniors, even though you may not have made a final decision, because I know um, college decision day is not until May 1st, we do encourage you to put down your school that you're most leaning toward. And we understand that you may come back to give us the final decision, um, but unfortunately you're only able to put one choice into the application. So make sure that that choice is the one that you're most leaning towards. Do not use words to respond to questions that require a link to try to bypass the system. Again, this only hurts you. And avoid completing the application in haste. You don't want to have submitted your application and then turn around and you say, oh, but I forgot to, or, oh, I meant to list this. Because once the application is submitted, it is final. And so here are just some next steps and checklists. The scholarship opportunities that you match with, they will automatically be generated on your award spring or your SLM dashboards. Once your application is submitted, it is final. There are no go backs or edit or changes. Just to reiterate, all responses that you report on your application are self-reported. So we do have to verify that information. So a verification does go to your institution. For example, if you indicated that you are a junior on your application, but when we send verification to your school, your school verifies that you're a sophomore. This could have an impact on your scholarship eligibility. So we do use verification as a checks and balances. If a scholarship does not appear on your dashboard, 
This essentially means that you did not match to this scholarship based on the eligibility criteria. Every scholarship opportunity has eligibility criteria. This outlines everything that a student must satisfy in order to be considered for the opportunity. And I will stress everything. So even if you don't meet one eligibility criteria, you will not be matched with that scholarship opportunity. So again, this is another reason why we stress not to complete the application in haste because you don't want to accidentally click an incorrect response. Our scholarship timeline may take at minimum 12 weeks. So we do notify you on the application that the process can take a minimum of 12 weeks. We know that students get anxious and excited, but we do ask that you allow that minimum of 12 week process in order to hear your decision. Also understand that timing does fluctuate and we do communicate this, but at minimum 12 weeks from the close date is what the timeline for decisions is. Applying for a scholarship does not guarantee the scholarship. We know that you get excited that you've made it through the review process, that you've made it through verification and getting past those uh, parts of the process, they are exciting moments. But no scholarship is guaranteed until a scholarship agreement is exchanged and returned. Please be sure to over communicate. As I mentioned, if your school changes, make sure that you let us know because even through the verification process, we go by what is listed on the application. So if we send it to the school that's listed on the application, but you are attending a different school, that will prolong your process. And parents, please do not create your student's account or complete the application or take the lead on all communications. We definitely know that you wanna ensure that things are being done in a timely manner or that you want to be that level of support for them that they need going through this process. But again, we do want them to take ownership of this process. It's definitely okay to check in on them and inquire how they're coming along with meeting the scholarship deadlines but please do not complete this process for them. And finally, here just a checklist for the application. Make sure you're answering all questions on the application, read every video prompt and answer every single component to that question. Make sure all of your links are working and are not private. Submit by the deadline because no late submissions will be accepted. You especially want to pay attention to this if you are outside the Eastern time zone, because the deadline for all scholarship waves is 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do not create multiple accounts. Check your emails and respond promptly. We may reach out to you for whatever reason, and if we're not able to get in contact with you in a timely manner, this could be the difference in you being awarded a scholarship or us moving on to another recipient. Check your dashboard for any ongoing follow-ups and be sure that those get completed as soon as possible, especially by the deadline. Also, do not put all of your eggs in one basket. One of the huge mistakes that we see are students that apply for just one particular scholarship opportunity that they're matched with, and then they just negate all the other opportunities. Make sure that you're applying to scholarships across the board. Of course, completing all the follow-ups through TMCF, but even if there are local scholarships that you're able to apply to in your hometown, make sure that you're exhausting those as well. And lastly, again, just to reiterate, because you've applied, does not mean you got the award. It simply just means that you applied for a scholarship to be considered. And one more thing to piggyback off of that, that I would add is know what financial obligation you need upfront to satisfy your account balance with your school. Our timeline may not coincide with your school when they request for payment. So you wanna make sure that you're understanding your financial obligation because just to reiterate, no scholarship is guaranteed. Before we go, we just wanna remind you of our scholarship waves. And so if you wanna screenshot this, but also a recording of this video will go out. Also to let you know, right now, the McDonald's Black and Positively Golden Scholarship is open. It is in our SLM platform. 
And so you can go in and create a profile if you haven't done so already. And actually, hopefully some of the tips that we've talked about here, you can use that as a trial run through the video response and application process that is housed on our SLM platform. Here is our contact information. So you'll wanna take that down. And now we'll open the floor for the team and myself to answer any questions you may have. All right, Natasha, so we did have a question earlier on the Q&A um, regarding the video essay. If that was the only option for um, applying for the scholarship. So if we're only asking for the video response. Yes, so we don't have written essays. The only thing we have to date, um, the only thing that we have, I shouldn't, not to say only, our scholarship applications require a video response. Thank you. And um, there's questions about are international students eligible to apply? So all that we can say is that once our scholarship wave opens, all of the eligibility requirements for each scholarship is listed. So once we do open up the scholarship wave and we have a list of the scholarship opportunities that we're currently accepting applications, we just advise that you all take close attention to the eligibility requirements to see specifically what that opportunity is asking for. We also have another question about lit in terms of what address to put in living on campus. So I would say as far as your address on your application, I would use your permanent address um, only because I, you know, sometimes your college address can fluctuate year to year. So I would just use the address that you permanently receive mail. We have another also, question. Oh, oh, sorry, Natasha. I was just going to say we have another question in the chat that's asking if students apply in wave one, do they still have to apply in waves two and three? So with the, oh, so the only um, scholarship op opportunity that's available in SLM, that's open now and that's the only one. The great thing about award spring is that once you apply for an opportunity, any other opportunities that become open, it will match to what you've answered in your application. So award spring will continue to match you. So you'll want to just frequently check your dashboard for any new opportunities that post. Or follow-ups. I'm sorry, let me clarify that. Thank you. Um, another question is asking about confirmation once the scholarship has been successfully um, submitted, do you receive confirmation that the application was submitted? You will, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you will receive a follow-up email that confirms that your application was submitted. You can also check your dashboard at any time to see um, if you have any um, outstanding um, follow-ups, as we talked about previously, and um, take care of that at that time. So you can check your dashboard if you um, are confused, if you still have any missing items needed to be addressed. So we have um, a question about redoing videos. And I believe you addressed this, but could we just reiterate about redoing your video responses attached to your profile? So if I'm understanding correctly, and if you, if I don't answer this correctly, then you can, re question. Um, but when you do your video uh, response, so for instance, when you, so I'll answer it two ways. So when you do your general application, there is a general question that you're going to answer, right? So that's going to complete the application process. That's how you're going to be able to, once you do that, that's how you, the matching process will happen. So then you'll see on your dashboard, the other opportunities that you could be eligible for that have different video response questions. So those are different video prompts that you want to make sure that you answer. And so once you submit each of those different video responses, that will be a completed submission. Now, if you're talking about redoing your video once you've submitted your application, you won't be able to do that. 
because once an application is officially submitted, you can't go back. It is accepted as is. Okay. I hope that answered that. And there's a question about um, redoing applications for each school year. Um, unless your application, unless your scholarship, if you're a recipient, says that it is a renewable scholarship, you do have to reapply for each scholarship each academic year. Majority of our scholarships are a one-time scholarship, so you would have to reapply but if you have a scholarship, if you're a scholarship recipient and it says renewable, you don't have to reapply for that scholarship. You would have different application requirements um, to, for us to verify that you're still eligible and in good standing. And let's see. Can you start and then return to an application or must complete the application process in one setting? That's a good question. You can start and return, but you'll want to be sure that you do get it done by the deadline. So you don't want to start the application. And then so, for instance, with wave one, um, as you saw, and I'll go back, wave one ends March 8th. So uh, you have a good amount of time to get that application completed. So just be sure that you're managing your time well. Um, so under, you know, we know that you all have school, extracurricular activities, jobs, the whole nine, but you want to make sure that you're making time for completing your application process for your scholarships, because essentially the funding um, is what you're after in order to um, continue, you know, continue your education, right? So make sure that you are allocating time to get that done. But yes, you can start and stop. But if it's not completed by the deadline, you will not be able to submit it. And I'll add one more thing. Um, one thing we'll always say, do not wait until that March 8th, because um, like, um, like they always say, if you were at the last minute, there's always something will always happen and you can't control it. Technology, it might be your computer, it might be anything. So just make sure you give us, give yourself enough time. And one other thing about the um, application, it kind of have like a progress bar that lets you know, this is where you are. You're in progress. You've completed this to kind of help you to kind of navigate, to see how, how much time you will need to complete each part of the application. Um, it seems like a lot of these questions are about scholarships. Um, so with because we do not have a current wave of scholarships open, with the exception of the McDonald scholarship, a lot of these questions can be answered once we actually open our wave of scholarships. This webinar is more informational, um, just giving you tips on how to uh, prepare for our scholarship application. So if you have questions about, um, again, the 23, 24 scholarships that you may have applied for and are still waiting for a decision or you're checking on a status, please send us an email. Um, this isn't the space for us to talk about the current scholarships for 23, 24. Um, and then if you have questions about eligibility for our future scholarship, Whenever we open, we do have the eligibility criteria for each scholarship. And so when you will see that, you'll see what that particular scholarship is looking for. Classification, if you have to have a certain GPA, attend a certain school, if it is eligible for international students, all of that information will be listed on our website. So our first wave, as we have here, opens up on January the 16th. And that will be our first wave of scholarships that we have open. So if you are a um, undergraduate or graduate student at that time, you'll be able to see the scholarships listed on the website to see if you would be eligible. So if you're a graduate student, you'll be able to see if we have any scholarships for graduate students, undergrad, graduating high school senior, all of that information 
is provided under the scholarship um, eligibility criteria. And again, that um, wave opens up January the 16th, 2024. The purpose of this um, workshop, again, is just to help prepare you for that January 16th open, um, open date. And if you're um, interested in applying for our McDonald scholarship that is currently open in our legacy platform. If you visit our website, you can see the current scholarships that we have open. We currently for the 24-25 just have the McDonald's and it does, like I say, list the eligibility criteria so that you can see, is this something that you uh, would qualify for? So if you're a graduate student, and you're looking for the McDonald's scholarship, you'll see that it is currently only for undergrads. And that is how we would list our scholarships on the website where it has all of that information on there. So I hope that helps to, um, to answer some of the questions in the, in the Q&A section, um, that, which are great questions. They're absolutely wonderful questions. We just wanna let you know that that information will be provided at the time we open up wave one. So there's one more question. Um, are all of the scholarship opportunities based on equal footing or does the application completed earlier in the process get more consideration? That is a really great question. So my response to that is because sometimes you do you do believe that if you apply earlier, you get the the best placement. Um, but the deadline is the deadline. And so there's no more better placement for someone who applies on March 8th, which they're clear of because the impossible can happen and the Internet can shut down. Um, than someone who applies on January 16th. So as long as you're getting it in by the deadline to be considered to be able to move through the process, that's what you should be concerned with. We have a good one. Of, um, it's asking um, the McDonald's scholarship, is it based on, it mentions financial need. All of our scholarships, um, you your need has to be determined and that is done during the verification process um, because if you do not have a need and your school says you're fully funded, then we cannot award you the scholarship because your school would send the money back. So all of our scholarships are need-based. There's a question about um, scholarships for a private institution such as Spelman and Morehouse. So you'll enter in the college that either you're currently attending or that you will be attending. And so, again, it is self-reported information that matches you. So some of our scholarships are member school specific, and then some of our scholarships are open to all HBCUs. And so you'll just want to stay tuned um, of, the of the information that you self-report, and then it will match you to the scholarships that you're eligible for to be considered. Um, but it is based on the information that you input into your application. So just a clarifying question uh, about parent finances. Um, again, all of that information is verified by the school. So we have certain certain information that we ask, um, and we're mainly asking um, what type of financial aid that a student may be receiving from um, the institution to make sure that an applicant isn't being over awarded. So we do rely heavily on the information that the school provides. All right. Well, these were some great questions. Um, the recording will be available to you all. And so we thank you for coming out this evening and we hope you have a great night and good luck with your scholarship process. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. 
um, anytime with your with questions.